So now we're going to move on to look at modifying dates. If you already have a date set, you're of course at some point going to want to modify it. This could involve adding two days, two years, subtracting two hours. It really depends. And this is entirely flexible. There's nothing in, th in terms of that that you can't do. So we're first of all going to look at a complicated example and then we're going to go on to look at a simple example. And this involves using the date interval class. So let's create a new date time instance just here. And we'll look at adding on a specific interval. So at the moment, if we just do a var dump on this, just so we can check the uh, date that it currently is, uh, it's currently the 15th of August uh, 2016 and we're at 10 o'clock. So if we wanted to increment this maybe by 10 days, two years, two hours, we can go ahead and do this using date interval. So to do this, we say date, add, and then in here we use an entirely new class and this is a new date interval. And into here, we pass an almost cryptic looking uh, set of letters and numbers. So basically, we start by P. This stands for period. Then we give the number. So for example, 10. And then we give the signifier, which is like days, months, years, whatever. So in this case, I'd say 10 D, which is 10 days. Then if we wanted to choose the time, we can say T and then again, the same thing. So two hours, maybe. So this would increment the current date that we have here by 10 days and two hours. So remember, we're starting on the 15th and we're at 10. So we should end up with 25 uh, or the 25th and we should end up with 12 o'clock. And there we go. We have now what we can also do is we can subtract date by using the sub method. So in this case, we're on 15 before, so we should end up with a fifth, and we were on 10 before, so we should end up with eight. So there we go, we're on the fifth, and we're at eight o'clock in the morning. So now that we know how to do this, this is overly complicated, but why have I showed you this if it is overly complicated? Well, if you need very fine grained control over how much you're incrementing by, this is very helpful. And what we can also do, by the way, is completely get rid of this and we can go ahead and do the same here. So we can subtract two hours as long as we've got the P there. If we get rid of the P, uh, you'll find that we get an error and you can do the same so we can add on as well. So we're keeping the date the same, but we're incrementing by two hours. Now, the reason this works, like I said, is because what we can do is if we wanted to increment by two hours, then what we can do is in here, maybe go ahead and say hours. And here we can say hours equals two. So it really depends on your needs. But this is tends to be a little bit better in terms of very fine grain control. Now, a better way to do this if you just know exactly how many days or hours you want to increment by, this is a very human readable way to do it. So what you can do is say new date time. And this is if you assume that you're starting off with the current date and time, you can into the constructor say plus two days, five hours, for example. So in this case, if we just do a var dump on the date, we get the following. So we were on the 15th, we're now on the 17th, and we've incremented this by five hours. So this helps, but what happens if you have an already existing date that you've created that you want to either increment or decrement by? By the way, to decrement this, you just use minus. It works in exactly the same way. So we're now on the 13th. Okay, so to do this then, we have a date time. Let's say we have a date time and we've gone ahead and set the date into this. So we may have said something like date, set date and then go, gone ahead and given a date just in here. So say 11th, 16th, and we have the following. Now what we can do is up here, say something like date, modify, and then we can do exactly what we just did passing into the constructor. So we can say, well, I want to see what the time is or the date is in two days time from this. And in that case, we have the 18th from the 16th. So as you can see, this is pretty flexible. You'll be very surprised at the amount of control you have over this. There's nothing you really can't do. But I have a warning about modification and we're gonna take a look at this now and it may seem a little bit strange. So let's start from scratch and let's just go and modify this date. So let's say modify and we'll maybe add two days just onto this like so. 
Now let's say we wanted to keep this original date, so this is the current date, and then we wanted to say, well, a new date here is in two days. So what we would end up with is the current date and time, and we would end up with the date and time in two days time. So we just have two days. So you might think, well, now I can use date and new date independently. Well, let's take a look and do a var dump on the new date. This should be what we expect. So we're currently on the 15th of uh, August and we've incremented this by two. So we're now on the 17th. Now we would expect the date here to be the 15th. When I refresh, you can see it's the 17th. What is going on here? All we've done is we've reassigned the date here, the modified date to a new variable. So why is it modifying this one? Well, that's because this is passed by reference, which means that as soon as you call this method, it will update the original one as well. It will still set this one, but it will update the original one. So this is not good. So how do we get out of this? Well, what we can do is say new date equals clone date. So this will make a, a copy of it, which won't be passed by reference. So we now have a new date just in here. And because we've cloned this, we can now say, well, the new date, which is currently uh, the same as the date up here, we just want to modify that. So now if we check out our new date, we get the following. So the 17th, as we would expect. But now when we go back to the original date, we have the 15th. So things like this can get really confusing and it can really break things if you're not careful. So that is pretty much it for modifying dates and times. There are other things that we can do with this, but again, we'll probably look at these throughout the rest of the series. And of course, if you do need to do something very specific, there's always the PHP manual to help you out. But that is pretty much it for modifying dates and times.